perform an experiment to find out the refractive index of the glass slab <clears throat> and I am also going to uh, give you the idea of how to find the lateral shift and this practical I have already done it before but I will do it more precisely this time and with the addition to that that how can we also find out the refractive index of the glass slab. So what are the things that we basically require are <clears throat> the glass slab, basic stationary items and of course you require four softboard pins. You require A4 size white paper and I am doing this experiment on this wooden pad right and of course there are two pins that you are supposed to diagonal, diagonally fix such that the paper doesn't move correct. So let us begin with our experiment. So the first thing is uh, we are going to put this glass slab at the center and then we are going to carefully mark its boundary. Right. So I am putting this exactly at the center. And I'm going to mark it its boundary so we are done right I have made the glass slab now what am I going to do I'm going to require an incident ray due to refraction it will bend towards normal then after it is going to emerge out and it will move away from the normal right so the first thing is I am going to mark the midpoint of say ABCD glass slab and let us say the midpoint is somewhere over here you know it need not to be very precise over here and now I am going to draw a line like this and I am going to call this as a normal right so this is my normal now this will be my point of incidence and I am going to make an incident ray say at an angle of 60 degree or 45 degree you can keep any angle uh, which you want so the protectors 90 degree should be coinciding with the normal and the point of incidence must be coinciding with this point like this now this is my 0 degree so if I move from 90 to 80, I am covering an angle of 10 degree, from 90 to 70, 20 degree, 90 to 60, 30 degree, 90 to 50, 40 degree and then 90 to 45 again 45 degree. So I am going to mark a point say 45 degree from here, this is my 0 degree and I am moving like this is 0 degree and I am moving it in this direction for by 45 degree angle right so my angle of incidence would be now 45 degree so I'm going to make a ray like this and this is my incident ray correct now on this incident ray I'm going to put two pins such that the distance between both the pins is minimum 5 centimeters so if I put one pin over here then the other pin should be at least at a distance of 5 cm from here or more to get the precise readings. So this is 5, so this is 0, so I am going to put the pin over here. Now these two pins are fixed here rigidly. Now I am going to put back the glass slab. <clears throat> now we know that this is our incident ray then the refracted ray would be somewhat inside and then the emergent ray would be like this. So I am going to see from here. So I am actually sitting on the chair right now. So I am going to sit on the ground and I am going to close one of my eyes and I will try to see these two pins from this side. And I will arrange two pins over here such that all four pins are in straight lines. So let me do it. Okay people, so what I have done is, I will show you, I have arranged two pins over here 
from this side such that all four pins are appearing to be in straight line. So I will show it to you. If you look from here, you will be able to see two yellow pins and now I am supposed to put two more pins over here such that all four pins are appearing in a straight line. You can see that. So all these four pins are in a straight line now. Correct. So returning back to our practical. Now I don't require these two red pins. So I am going to remove these two red pins. And I even don't require the glass lab. Now I am going to join these two points of the pins with this refracting surface of the glass lab. And now this is my emergent ray. This is my incident ray. This is the incident ray. Now this point and this point I am going to join them. This is my refracted ray. You can see that the refracted ray is bending towards normal. Then away from the normal I can also make a very small normal over here. Correct. Now this is my angle of incidence which was 45 degree. This is called angle of emergence. This is called angle of refraction. Now this incident ray, I also don't require these two pins, so I'm going to put it aside. Now this incident ray, I'm going to extend it in forward direction. So this incident ray, I'm going to extend it through a dotted line. like this. So this incident ray which is extended and this emergent ray must be parallel otherwise there is some error in the experiment. Now the perpendicular distance between these two is called lateral shift. So I am going to measure the lateral shift over here 1.9 centimeters. So the lateral shift for i is equal to 45 degree is 1.9 centimeter. This is done now. Correct. Now I am going to measure the angle of refraction, angle of emergence. What happens people, the angle of incidence and the angle of emergence must be same for a glass lab. But due to some human errors, we may not also get them equal. That's fine. The error of 1 or 2 degree is fine, totally fine, not at all an issue. The experiments are never always perfect. So now again I am going to measure it. So the zero of the scale, this 90 line is kept over here and the this midpoint is kept over here. So now look at this one. This is our normal, this is the angle. So this is 10, 20 and this is 25 degree. So this angle is 25 degrees. So R is equal to 25 degrees. So now angle of incidence is this, angle of refraction is 25 degrees. I am going to also measure the angle of emergence. You can see that the angle of emergence is 44 degree people, right? So the angle of emergence 44 degree. A small error of 1 degree is totally fine. As I said, no issues with that. Now people, take this rounder, compass, take any distance, 2 cm, 3 cm, preferably I am taking this distance to be 4 cm. Now I am going to take this as the radius, this point as the center and I am going to draw a circle. So now this circle is ready. 
now i'm going to make it still data darker because viewers might not be able to see properly and why we are doing this because we are supposed to measure the refractive index uh, without the uh, sign you know getting into the uh, the trigonometric tables i will give you a very easy method make sure that the normal that we had drawn touches the circle now what is to be done is these two are the points where incident ray is touching the circle and refracted ray is touching the circle from here draw a perpendicular line on the normal draw the perpendicular line on the normal let me give the name as a b c d e f g h i correct now see we have e g f triangle and we have h i g triangle so from this triangle from triangle e f g i am going to find out sin i so sin i is equal to perpendicular upon hypotenuse so ef upon hypotenuse is eg if you look carefully eg is the radius of the circle right and now i'm going to target upon this particular triangle ghi out of which gi is again the radius of the circle so from triangle g h i sin r is equal to perpendicular that is h i upon hypotenuse that is g i so now i am going to find out sin i upon sin r which is the snell's law sin i upon sin r which is the refractive index of the glass slab we know that sin i upon sin r is equal to refractive index of the second medium with respect to the air so i am going to get this ratio as the refractive index of the glass which is equal to ef upon eg divided by this so multiplied by gi upon hi now gi and eg are same because they are radius of the circle now i am going to measure ef and hi so with the help of scale ef is 2.8 cm so ef is 2.8 cm divided by hi hi is 1.8 cm now centimeter centimeter getting cancelled so i'm going to find out the value of uh, 2. Point. so 2.8 divided by 1.8 is 1.55 correct people so now i'm getting the refractive index as 1.55 that is the refractive index of this class with respect to air now people many of the viewers they have confusion that if we vary the thickness so people they misunderstand by thickness as this it is wrong people the thickness is actually this one don't get be don't be so shocked i am telling you that the thickness is actually the distance traveled by the light inside the slab so i am talking about this thickness so more you increase the thickness and right now i am dealing with thickness as 5 cm so if you look carefully this is 5 cm slab thickness don't consider this as the thickness it is irrelevant for us because the refraction occurs in this part so that is what is the thickness right people so i think that i have given you how to find out the idea you know how to find out the lateral shift as well as the refractive index you now without getting into what is sine and uh, cos and the log tables as well you don't need any other functions and this i and r must be equal and one more thing that in the experiment these two angles are always equal as you can see that these two are alternate angles so this is also r so people hopefully you have enjoyed the explanation please do subscribe to my channel for more wonderful videos in physics Thank you.